I imagine it's a little cold up in that tower today. I uh, I haven't been up there myself. I we only let John climb up there, but I would I would assume it's pretty cold. Good afternoon, everyone. It's seven minutes after the hour of one. Nine three two eleven eighty one eight hundred two two seven nine five six eight. My name is Jack Chris, and uh, glad to have you along. If you're like me, you enjoy this weather. If you're not like me, well, you can sit inside and listen to the radio. Lou Rockwell with Ludwig von Mises Institute will be with us, my good friend and colleague. He'll be coming up at six minutes after the hour of two. But in the first hour, you know, I've been talking for the past couple of weeks about voucher systems. And I've told you about a group of concerned citizens, clergy, educators in Louisiana who are putting pressure on Governor Buddy Romer to look at the possibility of a voucher system as a viable alternative. Uh, I think, honestly, that this would probably be beneficial in Mississippi, too, but I wanted to see exactly what was going on in Louisiana, and, of course, we uh, we made contact with some professors, but weren't able to get them on air for the, this week, because I did promise to do something this week. But I do have a, uh, an associate and colleague of my own, a gentleman by the name of Stephen Kinsella, who is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana, and Stephen is in the process of uh, drafting some legislation for the group and working with them. Stephen, thanks for coming over. Nice to be here, Jack. Welcome to Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you. Now, you're based out of Baton Rouge. That's right. And here's here's the biggest thing. I, I guess when we talk about a voucher system, Stephen, we need to go to the essentials and begin at the beginning, as they say. A lot of people have called me up and, and they've said, Jack, what is a voucher system? What is it? So I'm going to ask you, uh, with the Right to Learn Committee, what is a voucher system? Well, a voucher system is just one way the government can fund education. The way that the government funds education now is through the public school system. Uh, they pay the money directly to the schools, and the children go to the schools, and they obtain the education there. So it's not private by any means? No, it's, it's still not private. Okay. Well, it will involve elements of privatization, but it's still going to be government funded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How? I mean, what, what, what is the difference, let's say, in, in basic taxation and a voucher? Okay, well, the, the main difference is, given the, the fact that the government is going to fund education, the question is, what is the best way for the government to do that? And we find that the best way for the government to do that is to use some sort of competition mechanism to use the market as much as possible. Right. So if the government wouldn't give the money directly to parents instead of giving it to the schools first, then the parents would have some incentive to look for good schools and the schools would have some incentive to perform well in order to attract more students and therefore to make profit. Well now, you know, we have of course Ray <coughs> Mabus here, Buddy Romer in Louisiana, Bill Clinton in Arkansas, the triumphant of the South right. as we like to call them. Uh, these guys are by no means free marketeers. Most people associate the voucher system with conservative movements or libertarian movements, you know, in my case. Uh, Romer was not for this initially, what what was his original education plan, and and how are you all? Uh, what kind of success are you having in in convincing him uh, of your system? Well, the voucher system is taking off across the country. It's being implemented in several uh, several states right now. Governor Romer at first said that he was against the idea when he was uh, running for governor, and recently, uh, when this Right to Learn committee was formed, Governor Romer sort of backed off his stand and said that he would support maybe a choice system within the public school system. But we're not really too concerned about that. Uh, if we can convince the citizens of the state that it's a good thing, and we think we can, then Governor Romer will probably follow their wishes. Well, uh, let's talk about numbers, because I think you and I would agree in modern politics. I mean, w I got into a big debate here yesterday about majority rule, and it's obvious you do have to have numbers, uh, even though I think, and, and you do as well for reasons we'll get into, that a voucher system is the the rational and viable alternative to education you're still going to have to have a lot of numbers to inst instigate it or institute it how uh, what kind of numbers do you have in louisiana well recently some polls have been taken and it seems like uh, a vast majority well over fifty percent of people favor a choice system in schools uh... the reason seems to be that most people have their children attend public schools and most people are fairly dissatisfied with the quality of education that they're getting and and most people if you ask them the simple question would you like to have some choice as to whether you can determine where you can send your child to school, or would you like the state to tell you where you have to send them? Most people would like to have choice. Well, sure, but what about the people uh, like myself who don't have children? Now, as it is, through the system of taxation, I still have to pay. My money, my tax money is taken uh, to promote schools right. under the voucher system. Would that change, or would it still be the same? Well, now that's an argument against public fund funding of education at all. Now, that's 
uh, one that we're not going to win for any time. And sure. uh, members of the Right to Learn Committee have different views on this. Uh, but would the voucher system change? What the voucher system, the the reason that people that don't have children would be for it is because it would be, uh, it would actually save them money in the long run because the voucher system would be much cheaper. Uh, the the free market can provide education uh, either of better quality for the same amount of money or of the same quality for a lot lower amount of money or somewhere in between. So if we want to have the approximately same level of education or even better education, uh, it's going to take less tax dollars to fund it through the private market system. Okay, speculation. Uh, with competition, and this has always been one of my main arguments against the government, it is a monopoly as such. Even though we complain about monopolies in the business community, the government is a monopoly. That's right. Certainly education in government is a monopoly. With competition comes the fact that some people, the realistic fact that some people will outperform others, some schools will outperform others, some schools will lose students, lose money, and teachers will be out of work. Now, I can imagine that the NEA in Louisiana and teachers groups are probably, for the most part, against the voucher system, right? That's right, and uh, they, they pr th their, their ostensible reason is that they're uh, promoting the interests of the students and they want to keep equality. <laughs> but, uh, the main the main concern is not equality. The main concern is that people get a good education. I mean, we would rather see uh, poor students get a better education than they're getting now than everyone get a worse education than in the, in the current system. And to have mediocrity enshrined right. as it is. Right. Now, when we come back from the break, I want to ask you, I want to go into more about the ins and outs and specifics of the voucher system, but also I want you to answer the charge that the voucher system is actually a form of uh, discrimination against minorities, sure. minority children. 932-1180, My guest is Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana promoting the voucher system. I'm Jack Chris. Stay with us. Brother, brother, brother. And we are back, 17 minutes after the hour of one. Good afternoon. I'm Jack Chris. 932 1180 1-800-227-9568. And again, uh, my guest in the studio is Mr. Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. And, I mean, I'm sure many of you are saying, well, this is Louisiana. Why are we talking about Louisiana? I think that the, the system of, uh, of the vouchers, uh, or a voucher system, would be a viable alternative for Mississippi. And certainly, I think we're going to have to look at our neighboring states to see how they're doing. Now, now you mentioned, Stephen, that other states are, are involved in the voucher system. Offhand, do you know what states are? Yeah, I know Minnesota, and I think there's about five others. I don't know their names right offhand. Was this grassroots organization like the Right to Learn that got it uh, instigated? Right. And uh, a lot of times what causes it is the 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 poor uh, poor education people are receiving just such a strong uh, demand grows for uh, some kind of change in the educational system. <clears throat> okay, now one of the main arguments I hear uh, against the voucher system is that you're going to be propping up an elite school system and that necessarily, even though behind all this talk of choice is talk of racism, uh, unfairness, right. uh, inequality. Right. Uh, I don't see, <laughs> I really, I think there's such a, a massive confusion on the part of people who say that. I'd like for you to explain okay, why. Well, first of all, there's two aspects. Uh, for the people, a lot of people are concerned about equality, and that's, a, that's what a lot of the uh, criticism of the voucher system comes from. But first of all, uh, people that are well off and rich that go to private schools right now, they're not treated equally in the first place. They're paying double taxes. So under the voucher system, they would be able to get the vouchers also. So that would uh, be a measure of equality. But uh, the, the fundamental thing is this. The government pays for everyone's education right now in some kind of way, except for the very rich. If you give the money directly to the schools, a lot of the money gets wasted on bureaucracy, red tape. Say the state spends $3,000 per student on, uh, on education. Surely only maybe 2000 2400 or so gets to the actual school. Now, if you give the money directly to the parents in the form of a voucher check, that has to be spent on a qualified public school or qualified private school, then the parent gets the extra money directly. So the parent can spend up to $600, $500 more at least. Therefore, uh, it's not going to lower the, the level of schooling for anyone. The poor children are gonna, going to actually have more money effectively to spend on schools, and they're going to be able to have diversity also. They're going to be able to choose a better school. How? Because of this? Uh... Well, the, because the voucher check can be used at any qualified school. Well, for example, uh, now... 
I was told I was wrong about this, but I thought I was correct. That <coughs> you take a, let's say, a family who is living in a, um, I'm not going to refer to Jackson or even uh, Baton Rouge, but an area, let's say, like Washington, D.C., in a, in a neighborhood that is wrecked with drugs, crime, and so on and so forth. And the school, of course, is located right in that district with all the crack dealers and all the assorted right. hoodlums and, and lack of education and, and violence and rape and whatever going on there at the school. Now, as I understood it, given uh, the, the, uh, what the voucher system stands for, a parent who lived in that neighborhood with this money could afford to send their child to another school out of that area instead of having to send them to the drug-infested school in their neighborhood. And I was told they can already do that. Well, there's, there is some measure of choice. I, we're talking about poor people. Okay? I, I, I mean, we're not talking about people who can afford to send their kid out. But people who are, live in these neighborhoods, they're stuck there. The schools are terrible. Uh, I, I had always assumed that with a voucher system, they could go elsewhere. But I was told, well, no, voucher doesn't really make any difference. Okay, well, let me try to put it this way. There's, there's two big virtues of the voucher system. and It increases freedom of choice. And uh, in that way, it lets parents send their children to the school they want. Uh, but also, it's, it's, it's a more efficient way to do it. Now, and it also increases competition between schools and increases their efficiency and the level of services they provide. Now, some people just want a choice system. In other words, they want to have a choice system within public schools. It doesn't involve a voucher. It just involves letting you apply, you know, fill out some kind of bureaucratic permit to send your child to another school instead of the one by your house. Yeah. And this might have a very small amount of, uh, effects that cause schools to compete, but not very much. Uh, the voucher system, the voucher system, is radically different, and radically better. And uh, speaking of equality, Jack, uh, this will increase the equality of poor people. Right no. now, the rich and the well-off can afford to send their children to private schools. I went to a private high school myself, and my parents are pretty much upper middle class. Poor people can't do that now. Under the voucher system, they would get a voucher check. They can spend this at any school they want. They can add their money to it if they want. Maybe they can save an extra $500 a year, add it to the voucher check, and go to a very good school. It puts poor people and lower middle class on an equal footing with, with richer people, and it gives them a sense of dignity. It gives parents uh, an incentive to you know, go out shop, and shop for yeah, schools with talk their, to with teachers their child, and, right. and not feel helpless. Yeah, they, instead of the way it is right now, they just don't care, and they feel kind of hopeless the way it is. They're, they're caught in a trap. The Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana, besides promoting the voucher system, what are your main criticisms of uh, the school system as it is? I mean, is it is it just a matter of choice, or are you also critical of the method of teaching in the schools well, and, and the, the actual schools right. themselves? No, that, that's a substantive, substantive crit critique of the schools. Um, it's what they teach and the way they teach it. Um, yeah, you can you can go and pick out the bad things that they do, and the you know the terrible methods they've adopted over the years because of Dewey and things like that. You know sure. the, the look say method and all these ridiculous ways of teaching. Uh, yeah, f from my point of view, I would rather send my child to a school that that uh, that hammered down on the basics: reading, writing, arithmetic, history, geography. But th but you wouldn't have to. I mean, you wouldn't have to. That's the point. You could send your child to a, a hippie love, uh, a Hyde Ashbury uh, well, experimental I'm, school. I don't right? know if that'd be qualified, but s well, some, some <laughs> would be qualified. I yeah, you'd so have so. some experimental schools that would be qualified. Yeah. Uh, yeah, since the government would still be qualifying schools as the, as the government does now, I'm sure they would still have some rather conservative and traditional values. They would have to, uh, you know, the school can't be totally experimental. It can't just be an excuse to take your money. But, um, yeah, you could have like an art oriented high school, an engineering oriented high school, Christian. a general, a Christian high school. And this this is another good thing about the voucher system. It would it was it's like privatizing the entire system and it would remove all the Christian, non Christian, evolution, creationism debate. That is raging. That's right. But and it is really unfair if you think about it in the way the public school works now. It is very unfair to, to force you to pay taxes if say if you're um, say if you're a Jewish and to spend that to subsidize um, creationist teaching. It's very unfair. On the other hand, it's very unfair to take um, a, a, a fundamentalist Christian's money and force him to support the idea of evolution because he doesn't believe in it. It doesn't matter whether evolution is true or not. It is. But a Christian shouldn't have to f support that if he doesn't want to. But now, what about... I, I'm going to go back to the government itself. I, I, I really don't see how you're going to get the support you need or how we can get it here in Mississippi. We're fooling with a lottery. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want us to get into that, too, and see if that's ever been brought up in Louisiana. I, I don't see how you're going to get local government support for, 
what you're doing, and you're going to have to get it. You're going to have to get That's it. That's true, and, and we're, we're still in the infancy stages right now, and right now we have to work out the plan of what exactly we want to develop. We have to finish the legislation, and then we have to work on the politics of convincing people. But it seems like there's a lot a lot of uh, support support for the idea of choice. Okay, but what about compromise with the voucher system? I understand that you it's it, like an either-or situation. There might be a problem. Well, uh, it, it, I mean, you might win a partial victory, and then compromise would set in. And as I understand it, you and some other members of the committee are, are not going to be compromised on this issue. Well, you know, it depends on what you mean by compromise. In, from my point of view and from some people's point of view, we're compromising already by even talking about the concept of public funding of education. Yeah, right. Uh, some people don't believe the government should fund it at all. They ought to let you know, it's the parent's responsibility to do that. You ought not have kids if you can't afford to send them to school. Right. But given the fact that the government is going to support education, we're, we're going to draw a line and say we're only going to work, put a lot of time into this, if we can get a privatized system. Some people want to keep it within the public school system. They don't want the public schools to be faced with competition from private schools. And they also don't want the people that can afford to go to private schools now to be subsidized by taxes like everyone else. Uh, I myself will not work for for that kind of system. Well, you know, it could even be uh, racism to not support the voucher system. In a way, think about it. I think it. it is because it perpetuates racism to, to exactly. keep the poor uh, exactly. less educated than the people that can afford some to go of to the, the people, better schools. Right. Some of the people who are prejudiced can say, well, we don't have to have these type of people or the lower class mixing with us. That's right. All right, so we're going to deny them I, the I choice. I think it is a, a sort of elitism, Jack. I, th I think that is. 27 minutes after the hour of 1, 932 We're discussing the voucher system with Stephen Kinsella with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana, and you're on the air. Jack, it, it just started raining. I'm standing at a phone booth now. I, that's, that's that is loyalty. Dollar. That is loyalty. <laughs> uh, no, Thanks. really, I wanted to call because I wanted to congratulate the man on... Uh, you guessed on trying to get involved with it in a grassroots manner and try Thank to get you. this thing, the ball rolling. And, uh, you know, all over the country we're having a, uh, we're re-looking at education and we've got to come up with ideas. There may be a hybrid of what he's come up with and something else. Uh, I don't have enough information about it right now to, to know the chances of it passing, but just just from hearing you talk, it sounds too good to be true. It's got too many common sense things, and uh, <laughs> the people are going to, the people that want everybody to have the same thing, you know, uh, I can hear them hollering discrimination now because a parent can choose to go here or there. Right, right. which and, is uh, the opposite of discrimination. And that's that's the thing I, I think is going to really hold it back from the start. But, uh, we'll call her up. Five states, Arkansas, Iowa, Minnesota, and Nebraska, and Ohio, they've all adopted choice plans right now. Well, I, I'm... That tickles me pink, and I hope it keeps going. And see, what I'm what I'm going to do, the reason I had uh, Mr. Kinsella on today is to discuss it. I would like to push for this here in Mississippi as a rational alternative to lo uh, uh, lottery systems and more government, more taxation, which is what we're faced with in Mississippi. Exactly. Jack, i got to get out of the rain. It's hey, going down hard. you're going to catch a cold. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you. your call. Thanks a lot. 932-1180, and you're on the air. Hello. Hey. Hey. Look at here. Uh, I would like to ask that guy that he knew see this movie, The Billionaire Boys Club? No, I didn't see all of it. Okay, you know about it. Yeah, I know about it. Now, I guess those guys came to a pretty good school. Most of their family were millionaires. And, this, and you see how they turned out now. It was a <laughs> movie! Oh, okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it was based on it was based on real life. Yeah, but sir, look. But, but, well, okay, look at this. Let me ask you something. Now, now, Let me ask you something. It's back to racism. Okay, this is uh, separate but equal. And, and the bottom line is, okay, you don't want the whites with the blacks, and uh, they're gonna figure out a way. It was just like busing. Okay, okay so that's uh, they used to bus for segregation. For the same but, reason. But, but once it, it started for integration, they started tearing the bus. Caller, let me ask you a All question. Right. Caller. Yeah. Do you have any children? Yes, yes, sir. If and, and went through the public school, it probably could compete with you. But would you rather be able to have choice to send them to the school of your choice? Well, w wouldn't you like to be able to, to shop around? School, yeah, it could have gone to private. That's what we're arguing but, for. Okay. Would, wouldn't you rather be able to choose the school they attend instead of being told which well, school they have to attend? Look, uh, my wife is school teacher. They got, they got, they got people in you know, a public school that could teach. Hey, I appreciate your call. I mean, look, for the same reason you can't look at a movie and say all wealthy people turn out like this, we don't 
you know, look at criminals from the ghetto and say, well, all ghetto people are criminal <laughs> and evil. Hopefully uh, the man will uh, see where we're coming from. Yeah. Because, again, as I said, I think this is the opposite. Right. We're not sponsoring a billionaire voucher plan anyway. No, no billionaire <laughs> voucher plan. I'm Jack Chris. My guest is Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana promoting the voucher system. How would it work in Mississippi? We'll wait for your comments and questions right after this. Time now for local news. Stay with us. And we are back, 134 at News Talk 1180 WJNT. Good afternoon, I'm Jack Chris. 932-1180. Toll free anywhere in the state, 1-800-227-9568. We're discussing the voucher system uh, for several reasons. One, to look at how a neighboring state, Louisiana, is handling the situation, how they're trying to promote the voucher system. Also, how we could possibly instigate it here as a viable uh, alternative to the lottery system. My guest uh, to... Uh, toward this uh, situation is Mr. Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana, and he is uh, drafting some legislation uh, for the committee. 932-1180, Stephen, before we go to the phones, uh, it, I think it's interesting. You've got some statistics about the number of public school teachers who send their kids to right. private schools. Yeah, now this is interesting. Uh, I have this uh, some statistics here that give the overall percentages of students in private schools around the country, and the number varies from around 14 to 20 percent in different cities. And in every city, the percentage of public school teachers who send their children to private schools is about twice as high. For example, in Albuquerque, 30 percent of public school teachers send their children to private schools, whereas only 14 percent of over, you know, students are in private schools altogether. Uh, is I don't think it's because of wealth. I don't think public school teachers are in the top higher brackets of the country. That's not the reason they send them. The, I think they send them there because they see the difference and they know the difference. Maybe they know something we know. I, yes. They know something we already know. Yes. You're on the air with Stephen Kinsella. Hello. Yes, I think it's an excellent topic and a good idea, but I do have a question I'd like to ask about the voucher system. Please. Yes. Wouldn't that set up, uh, if everyone was on the voucher system, that would pretty much give you the minimum standard school? Uh, not necessarily, unless you consider today's schools the minimum standard school. Uh, under the current voucher system, we will just take the same amount of money the government is spending per student now and try to find a way to transfer that to the voucher check. So. You know, you can purchase at least as good of an education with, with the same amount of money as the state's purchasing it, purchasing it with. But can't you see, I'll say, uh, you know, a midtown slum area school district setting up that however much it costs to operate a school, say if each child gets the round numbers of $1,000. Um, well, I think it'd be higher than that, maybe 3000 sir. Okay, yeah, but I'm, well, okay, <laughs> 3000 Okay. Okay, but can't you see a school operating for, if it costs 3000 to do the students, can't you see in the in the affluent suburbs a uh, school setting up that costs 6000 you know? Oh, sure, sure, that's right. And and don't you think that that would cause a terrible discrepancy? Oh. Uh, uh, and it, I'm not talking race, just, you know, monetary and whatnot. I think, what it, I think the only reason now in Mississippi that private schools are not just flourishing is because they don't get public money. I think if you give them the, this big boost of money, they will just, Abound and, and, I and, think, and I think right. it will leave part That's the whole of society point. behind. Well, no, it won't. Everyone will be part of that system then. Uh, right now, there's like a two level system. You have the public schools, and then you have one vastly higher level, which is the private schools, and they're very expensive. Uh, if you would implement the voucher system, you'd have a smooth continuum from lower cost to higher cost. Okay, what, what, why do you say the pu private schools are, are vastly high? I mean, I went to public schools, and I'm a doctor, and I got a good education. And I don't, that statement, where do you, where do you statistics to say well, the private schools are vastly, there's a lot up in the Delta just set up strictly for segregation that uh, I don't think they're vastly higher to public school education. Well, yeah, some people do get good ed education in public schools like yourself, but the general tendency is that private schools are much better than public schools, and, and that's uh, evidence, for example, by the statistics I just read where mostly public school teachers send their children to private schools at a higher rate than the average population does. And caller, look at the, uh, you know, look at what is being taught, and look at the, the a lot of the people coming out of public schools. I mean, I came out of public schools, uh, uh, you did, uh, I think many of us did, but uh, certainly a lot of students are coming out scarred. Oh yeah, well, I agree, and I think it's a good idea. I, like, I mean, I have a five-year-old child. I'm yeah. very interested in the school system. Yeah. But I think I think that it's obvious what's going to happen in in these insta instances. I mean, I think you're going to leave a, a segment of the po you know, population behind. Caller, how are they going to be left behind if they have as much money to spend? now or under the voucher system as they do now because they won't have as much money to spend as yes. they do now well if the government spends say three thousand dollars per child on a public school and you can send your child there and instead they give that check to you uh... why couldn't the free market supply schools you know for the demand of public uh, private schools that would uh, develop if everyone had this voucher check they could spend 
because the private you would have schools which would you have schools which you would go the student granted you would have the lower the lower schools if the family get the voucher check and the, they would take the child for the voucher amount those schools would exist let us let us uh we're going to follow up on that caller we're going to have to move on though i appreciate your uh your uh position Oh, okay. Criticism. Thanks I a lot. Appreciate your show. Thanks a lot. Uh huh. Nine three two. Did you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I just want to say that um, in in the free market now we have the free market and everything from hamburger franchises to department stores to computer manufacturers, and we have a continuum of service that people purchase, and uh, people aren't left out at all. Uh, the the poor middle class can go to Kmart now and and to the the very nice stores that aren't the Dillard's. And they get much better products than the people in Russia do where everyone's equal. Sure, sure. Let's go back to the phone. You're on the air. Hello. I've got uh, three questions, and they'll hang up and let me respond to mm -hmm. save time. But uh, I'm really worried about where all this uh, top-level bureaucracy savings is going to come from. If, in fact, you're going to have to still have accreditation people and still to supervise and look over the uh, whole problem of education, and uh, are you going to make a deal with the local taxi companies that they accept vouchers too? Because that's, some that's children come from poor families that don't have any means that's of transportation, right. sure. so they yeah. couldn't get to the school of their choice. I wanted to bring that up. No, that's a good point. And the the third thing, I think that Mississippi, I don't know about Louisiana, but we do still have an underlying current of racism, and we one of the biggest waste in our school system now is a lot of schools outside the Jackson area open just for that reason. In Yazoo County, you've got two elementary schools less than eight miles apart, one staying open, cafeteria facilities, administration, building utilities, maintenance, you name it. Sir, you know, I agree with that. service 120 white kids. I agree with that. I, I think, though, this voucher system would eliminate that. But not only that, don't you think, as it is, we're forced to do certain things and go to certain uh, schools, uh, and that is even worse than racism. Well, I'm just, I don't see the same as what I'm saying. Okay, I let, think let the me... administration costs are still going to be there, and also the transportation problem. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. I appreciate your call. Okay, let, let me, wanna... even if you're right, uh, you'll save money because schools will be run more efficiently, and they'll be cheaper themselves, or they'll be able to supply better education for the same amount of money. But you will save money on uh, on the bureaucracy because the entire bureaucracy that's set up now is not just for accreditation. Even if you still need accreditation, uh, you know, some, some way to certify schools, you can, you can knock out a lot of the rest of the bureaucracy. Now, on your uh, question about transportation, which is a very good point, um, if schools can be run more efficiently, say, uh, say they can be run for less than the voucher amount, well, they can use that extra money to offer free transportation to people. They will be trying to get as many competition. Yes, they, yeah. competition under competition, some schools will probably offer daycare services, uh, Free meals and free transportation for the for the amount of the voucher. That's a great point. And not only that, I you know I think about racism. It's always yeah. going to be. It always will be. Well, let's. Uh, but but I think uh, put it this way. I think uh, maybe I'm strange about this. I think if if black people or white people don't want to associate, we shouldn't force them yeah. to do so. That's my opinion. Well, let I, me let me make one final comment on racism. There, uh, we have to quit looking at education as something that's not just an economic good. It is an economic good, like all other goods, and it is subject to the laws of supply and demand. Just as now, you might have a higher percentage of blacks and poor people, or, or that are poor, um, they might patronize the, the the lower cost stores like Kmart or Walmart higher than uh, than Dillard's or something yeah. like that. But there's no uh, appeal to bus people from Kmart to, to to Dillard's. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's take another phone call. You're on the air with uh, Stephen Kinsella. Hello. Yes, uh, Jack. Uh, we've discussed this point before, mm -hmm. and uh, I agree with Mr. Kinsella. And as an example, my child goes to a private school, and uh, the SATs and ACT tests that they take are just way above what the public school level does. And he's right about about three thousand dollars per child in public schools, where for less than half that, my child is getting a, That's a, right. a great deal better education. That's right. Because this school has to compete for my money. That's right. They have to provide a superior product in order to attract me to that school. Right. Sure. And, and I think that would help. On the voucher system, would, would provide the same thing. You'd get rid of all the bureaucracy. I read something not long ago, I don't know where, but uh, they said in some <coughs> school districts, the figures were from the federal government, by the way, but in some school districts in the United States, only 49% of the employees were teachers. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And then look <laughs> look at where the, most of the money is going, yeah. down a rat hole almost. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the people who are not teachers are That's in a good point. income part right. of, the, of the school system. Right. Well, I'm trying to push this. I think it would be, uh, uh, as I say, I keep saying this, but I, I agree with it. I think it would be a viable alternative. Right. I think what we're doing now is grabbing at straws with a lottery system here in sure. Mississippi, and I think we should look to our neighbors in Louisiana. Right. And, uh, well, that, that lottery is a pipe dream yeah. anyway, but... The, lot of the uh, voucher system has been used in Europe for, for years and years and years, and it's working. Sir, I appreciate your call. Thank you, Jack. Thanks so much. Uh huh. 16 before the hour of 2, 932 1180. 1 800 free. If you're on the line, hang on. You'll be next. My guest is Stephen Kinsella. We're discussing the voucher system. How it. Again, my guest is Stephen Kinsella with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. We're discussing the voucher system. You're on the air. Yes. Um. First of all, I'd like to comment that I am from Louisiana, and I'm very glad that we are headed in this direction. I hope we are. Got another homeboy on. Yeah. <laughs> um, my first question is, since I haven't been in the state for a while, is Governor Summer supporting this? Um, he backed off from his anti-choice stand at first, so now he said he would look at some choice within the public school system. Which is positive coming from a bureaucrat's mouth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. All right, I think he's following public opinion myself, mm -hmm. which is good. My second thing I'd like to say is that I, I um, agree with you that the, the private school education is much better than the public school education, at least in Louisiana. I graduated from a Louisiana public high school and went into a private college and found myself almost totally lost. Right. But, uh, well, not lost. I was able to handle it, but I, was, I felt unprepared and felt betrayed by the public school students. You had to lag behind a little bit well, of, of it, the private school students? Or? Well, no, I didn't really fall behind them. It's just that I was working, you know, Ten times harder sure. than it was in, in high school, and yeah, I thought if I had been happened, prepared right. for that in high school, it would have been much better. Right. Um, I found myself behind where I thought I should be, um, mm -hmm. and I do I do hope that we'll be headed in this direction. Um, my main question is, if we're able to implement this, would it be better to keep it in the public school system or try to go fully privatized with it? Well, I, I personally will not work if it's going to be just public school. The, is it, the the most the, the large amount of the competition will come from the private schools. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to improve the public schools. Uh, if you just put competition among public schools, there might be some marginal improvement. But I think one of the dangers of that is it's not going to be too too much of an improvement, and people are going to blame that upon the oh, privatization the idea. That's and there'll right. be something like a magnet school. A straw. Well, it, well, no, they would attack a straw man. I think uh, they would say this is the voucher system. This is your voucher and system. And it's not working too well. So therefore, right. let's go back to how it was. So I would personally only support a a pretty much full-fledged system would have to incorporate private and public schools. Okay, um, so are you thinking that it may go the way of the magnet schools and that that's what would happen to it? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, caller. A, a magnet school like, um, well, I know they have them in central Louisiana, right. it's a, uh, where one school in the area has all the specialized programs. It's in a predominantly black neighborhood. Okay. It well, doesn't have anybody zoned to it. Okay, now, now, see, you're thinking of the government has set it up that way. Right. Under the voucher system, whichever way the market developed would be, you know, if there's demand for a special school in an area, then it will probably be, it will probably develop. Some educational uh, corporation that's trying to make a profit will develop. They'll see the demand, they'll try to fill it. Uh, th there surely will be diversity among schools because there is a, a, de a demand for different specialized types of schools. But it won't be the same as the, as the magnet school. Okay. One other question. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking very seriously about moving back to Louisiana and working on teaching certification, which would take me about a year and a half. Right. Um, and if I were to do this, do you feel that if the voucher system comes to pass, do you think that there would be a, um, a larger market for teachers in the state? Uh, there will be a larger market for good teachers, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I agree with that right away. <laughs> and, and we would certainly think you'd be a good teacher. Um, I think that's right. Yeah. There will be a larger market for good teachers. There will be, okay. Listen, I appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 932-1180, If you're on the line, hang on. We've got a breakaway for the Wall Street Journal report. I'm Jack Chris, my guest, Stephan Kinsella, with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. We're discussing the voucher system. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Nine five six eight. Discussing the voucher system this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. My guest is Stephen Kinsella, who is uh, works with the Right to Learn Committee, based in Louisiana. And our purpose in doing the show is to see what our neighbors are doing as far as the voucher system, and to see how far we can go with it here in Mississippi. You're on the air. Hello. Yes, I've got a couple comments uh, regarding the voucher system. Sure. The first is that, in all likelihood, uh, one of the qualifications in a state like this 
before school would uh, be able to accept vouchers, and they'd probably probably be, be uh, required to have a certain amount of racial diversity to uh, right. That, that's possible to strike out at, at uh, all white academies. Right, and, that's and true. Try and eliminate them. And furthermore, I think you find a lot of people would keep their children home and school them at home if they could. Uh, get paid for doing so. Well, let's put it this If they're qualified as much as a public or private school, then they ought to be able to do that. What if they're not? I mean, I think even if they're not, they should have that well, option. that's uh, right. But now that's another issue. Yeah, yeah, That's an issue of what should be qualified and what shouldn't be qualified. Caller, let me ask you. Are you opposed to that idea? Or does that no. bother you? Or No. Okay. Okay. Even if the, let's say, even if the parent is not qualified to teach, that wouldn't bother you? No, it wouldn't bother me. Okay. As, well, long, as long as the they could demonstrate their child was making educational progress. I wonder who they would have to demonstrate that to, though. Well, see, now, that, that's kind of a strike against the concept of government-funded education, but, again, we're already assuming that that's uh, going to be the case, and it is, probably will be. So yeah. we, we have to assume as a given the government has to uh, or is going to fund education, and they're going to qualify the education that people get. But at least this is a step yeah. away from more government control right. and to more choice, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, the idea of racism, callers, is pretty much... Uh, that might be part of the uh, qualification process, but it won't be any more than the segregation or the desegregation uh, plans and the busing that's going on now. So at least it'll, at most, it'll hamper the voucher system idea. And I think when people see how well it works, they'll just they'll quit trying to hamper it. I appreciate your call. Sure. Thank you. Nine three two eleven eighty one eight hundred two two seven nine five six eight. Would you see immediate results, though? I mean, let's say you get uh, you're successful. Romer goes for this in Louisiana. It gets instigated. You know as well as I do, whenever, look at deregulation as an example. Whenever a plane crashes, the critics rail, this is the fault of deregulation, right, we need right. government control. It's the same thing with gun control. Uh, you're going to hear this criticism, and I'm wondering, would the voucher system be able to put up uh, in its first few years? Well, as we see it being implemented in other states, we, we get to see the increase already, so that's evidence in our favor. Now, the voucher system will have to be implemented in a transitional period. Oh, I don't know, five or so years. It can't just be done overnight. Uh, even the bad teachers now have relied upon the jobs they have now, and it's sort of unfair to just force them out of a job immediately. Uh, so we'll let the free market work a little gradually. So, no, the effects won't be seen immediately because we'll be implementing the, the voucher system gradually anyway. Let's take another call before we go to the news. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello, Hello, yes. I didn't know I was going yes. yet or not. Good afternoon. I think the voucher system is a very good idea, and exemplary, good example, rather, would be the Jackson Public Schools, which has an extremely heavy, top-heavy budget with administrators. Mm -hmm. Only about 50% of the budget goes to the classroom teacher that's employees. That's right. I think that's right. And uh, you're looking at $100 million annually right here in Jackson. Sure. That, that's amazing. Sure. It'd be so, better to let the parents spend that themselves. So you so would just think about that, that uh, the teachers for a change would be asked, what could we do to help, <laughs> instead of discouraging teachers to speak. Teachers in Jackson, for example, are generally afraid to speak out that they won't have a job. That's a very good point. Not only would it give the parents choice, I think the teachers would have a, certainly a more That's vocal right. uh, right. uh, uh, output or input. That's right. Caller, thank you very much. All right. Uh, we appreciate your support. Nine three two eleven eighty one eight hundred two two seven nine five six eight. You're on the air. Yes, uh, I would like to say something about the private school system. Good. Okay, um, I have cousins that went to private schools, and I went to a public school to start, but uh, eventually my family income increased, and I went to a private school. Yes. And I never realized that they had so much more to offer, and I think that um, they should draw a limit and equalize things like that because the public schools, they're lacking a whole, whole lot because when I first attended the private school, I didn't know I was behind, and with hard work of my parents, I gradually caught up. And then I went to one of the top universities here in the state, but I didn't go to public school here in the state, but their public schools is much worse than where I went to public school. Sir, can you hold on for just a minute? Uh -huh. Could you, if you don't mind, we've got to go to the headlines, and we want to let you finish your comments. I'm Jack Chris. My guest is Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. And uh, what we'll do is uh, get in touch with Mr. Rockwell and uh, do the show with him at 2.30. I'd like to keep the subject going for another half hour. I'm Jack Chris, 932-1180, Stay tuned for local headlines and CBS News. We'll be back.
And we are back seven minutes after the hour of two. Good afternoon. We're back. Thanks for being with us. 932-1180-1800-227-9568. I'm Jack Chris. My guest is Stephan Kinsella, who is associated with and in the process of writing legislation for the Right to Learn Committee, a pro-voucher uh, ad hoc committee comprised of educators, clergymen, and parents and citizens in Louisiana. We're discussing the voucher system uh, per se and also how we might uh, could uh, institute such a system here in Mississippi. Again, Lou Rockwell, president and founder of the Ludwig von Mises Institute, will be with us coming up after the uh, news at the bottom of the hour. You know, Stephen, getting back to the discussion about the voucher system, I have noticed <coughs> doing the show that many people find a problem with the equation of uh, our, of education with an economic good. Uh, I think many people feel that education, that it, rather, rather they feel that uh, economic goods are coarse, base, materialistic, and to equate right. education with this is necessarily wrong. Yeah, well, and yet they turn it over to, to the government. Right. Have you all run into this type of mindset? In There's a, some of it. I think it, it change, it's changing with the uh, increased demand for the voucher system idea. I think it results from a general, dis, you know, the, the way that a lot of uh, intellectuals disparage the free market and call it uh, a gadget-producing kind of thing, and it's low in earthly material. But we have to realize that the goods produced by uh, the free market are not the, the primary. Th I mean, they are not uh, only from – they result from our free choices. When we have a free political and economic system, the things that result are the things that people choose. I, I see them as the result of freedom, and uh, I see them as uh, only enhancing our lives and the way we live and our freedom. Even as regards education. Especially as regards education, because it's so important. Any type of system which can make something that people desire and makes their lives better, anything that can make that uh, more available and more of higher quality, is not uh, low by any means. What about tax credits in the voucher system? Well, some people... Uh, prefer that method. Uh, that is another way the government could fund uh, kind of privatized education instead of giving people the voucher check. And by the way, the reason the government doesn't just give people the cash uh, to spend on education is because they might not spend it on education. It's kind of the same reason you don't give, you give someone a gift certificate to a store, but you don't give them the cash. You, you want to make sure they spend it on the thing you want them to spend it on. Right. But um, some, some uh, conservatives and libertarian-minded people would rather see privatization funded by ta tuition tax credits instead of, I think Charles Murray, who you interviewed before, sure, uh, yeah. prefers tax credits. He would also support the voucher system, and so would most people. But uh, some people think the tax credit idea is better because it only gives a break to people that are making money in the first place, so it doesn't it doesn't subsidize extreme poorness and things like that. Now, I don't really see the appeal to that. I think the voucher system is a more direct way, and it would work better. We touched on this briefly, and I, maybe this is more of a psychological issue than an issue of education, but... Surprisingly enough, the, the biggest teachers union, of course, the NEA, has <coughs> displayed a lot of hostility right. toward the voucher system. To your knowledge, any, is there anyone involved in the NEA, let's say in Louisiana or nationwide, who actually is sympathetic with the voucher system? Why or why not? No, there's not. It, it reminds me of, uh, I saw on Crossfire one time, Mo Biller, the head of the, uh, the postal union, and uh, he's uh, dominantly against, uh, you know, letting competition into the delivery of mail and when you ask him why he, he can't he can only say but because you don't need to do it but, you know, but what's he afraid of i think the same thing goes for the teachers unions and things like that if they were really interested in the welfare of students they would not be afraid of competition and of letting people choose to send their children to school where they wanted to i think they're interested in uh, perpetuating their little state subsidy and their and the, the cushy state jobs that they're granted. What about an overload of one particular school? I mean, let's say you've got seven schools in a given area. One school all of a sudden shows a little bit, well, or not all of a sudden, but has built a reputation, shows much more uh, going for it okay. as far as education. And you're going to have an overload of that one school, right. are you not? Well, let, let's put it this way. When you have a good that is not subject to the laws of supply and demand, when people can't pay for it and choose it, then... Either you're going to have shortages or you're going to have oversupply. You're going to have lines like in Russia or queues. Uh, and that's actually what happens in the public school system, except the government forcibly moves the lines around and puts you at another place. Now, in the free market system, after the system stabilizes and, you know, uh, things have gotten down to a pretty uh, good working out of the system, um, you would have 
demand will have canceled out and have, will have been met. At first, there's a transitional period, and we have to meet that. Schools that have much, much better education will be in much higher demand, and by the laws of supply and demand, they will be able to charge a higher price for that, of course. Um, so those will be the better schools. That's the way it is now, except the lower rung of the ladder is cut out uh, for the private schools now. Most people have to go to public schools. But when you allow the voucher system, everything is practically privatized, and you have a, a smooth, continuous ladder. People can get on at the lower rungs. They can add a little bit of their money to go to the better schools if they want. Yeah, but there again, though, you're going to hear cries of inequalities if this school raises its price. This one school, certainly it's going to go over the limit on the voucher, and people are not going to have choice. Right. Well, what we're hoping is that, well, no, certainly all schools won't be over the voucher amount. Schools right now are functioning at the voucher amount, at the amount the government serves. They can surely function at that amount. Um, now, even if we have a highly diversified and stratified economy where people have vastly different incomes and are willing to spend different amounts on education, you're going to have different types of schools that cater to different levels of people and that offer different prices of education. And different types of education. Sure. Like, like you mentioned, the Christian schools or, or special education, someone called in and asked about that. Rehab schools or schools for right. people who have different needs. Right. 932-1180, We're discussing the voucher system with Stephen Kinsella. You're on the air. Hello. Yeah, Jack, I like what I'm hearing down there today. i got to com comment and a, and a question. The, uh, the doctor who called in, I believe, from the Delta and got such a great education in the public school system, I believe he missed his logics course there. <laughs> but because uh, I know we're not shooting for equality at every school. I think we're looking for better education. Right. Well, maybe we've we got equality now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Too much of it. <laughs> yes. Everyone's at the lowest common denominator. That's right. The, the question, uh, the question that's been in my mind a long time about this voucher system thing is: Are, are we not being naive to believe that after receiving go, uh, money that comes back to us from the government, that they are not going to have their hand in dictating exactly what we can teach, and we're going to be right back where we started? Uh, as far as that's a good point, caller. Uh, I don't think we're going to be right back where we started. And, of course, that's the problem with government funding education. But, uh, as we know, they're going to do that anyway. We're hoping to minimize the effect of the government interfering. If you give the parents more choice and the, and the legislators and the bureaucrats less choice, hopefully we can minimize the damage of government getting their hands into our personal lives. Wait, is your, let, me, let me stop right here, caller, real quick. Is your goal to go for a completely privatized system? Is this just a chip away at the big bureau bureaucratic stone? Uh, Stephen, or is that your uh, aim? Is that the aim of the Right that, to Learn that's Committee? Not, no, as you mentioned, the Right to Learn Committee is an ad hoc group. Our immediate goal is to establish a voucher system. Now, right. different members of the group have different goals. Some would like to stop there, and some wouldn't. I personally would like to totally privatize education and get the government completely out. That is that's not the view of the Right to Learn Committee, and yeah. I'm probably the only one on the committee with that view. Well, I, I, there ought to be room for me on that committee and Jack, too, because I think we both agree with it. Well, we do. We do, <laughs> and, and you're called reactionary and radical, and I guess we are, but uh, I certainly, sir, am going to try and promote this as much on this show as I can and, and try to persuade people, not... not force it, of course, but persuade people to, to accept the logic of the right. voucher system. Well, Jack, give us some information so we can try to get something started here. Well, I'm, I, I'm going to do that. I'm also going to, if, if you listen later, we're going to give out uh, numbers of some people who you can contact in Louisiana. They, I have talked with them, and of course, uh, Mr. Kinsella, and they are willing to uh, work with us in some areas. Yes, they Good. Are. I'll be listening. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Fifteen after the hour, nine three two eleven eighty. You're on the air. Uh, to Jack and your guest. Hello. Hi. I think you all would... Uh, kind of be shocked to find out that uh, a lot of blacks in this country would really like to go to the system or maybe go past farther than voucher to privatization. I'm not shocked I'd, at all. I'd be pleasantly shocked. Uh, because at all. I wouldn't be. Uh, I was doing a lot of reading, and there's a trend in this uh, country. A lot of blacks are beginning to start up schools on their own. Sure, sure. that's right. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, your black colleges enrollment is going up. Higher and higher. That's right. And I think that you'll find uh, that you'll get a whole lot of solid support. Uh, I hope so, Colin. In the area of privatization in school. Well, let me make this comment. Not only all the citizens are treated like this, I think especially the black community by and especially the Democratic Party have been uh, uh, trying to sell the idea that stick with us. 
we can do what's best for you. We can do it. The government, right. let us do it. And I think more and more people are wising up and understanding, white and black and all citizens of the country, that that is just not going to work. It hasn't worked. It won't work. The only way it can work is for us to make our own decisions, right or wrong or indifferent. We are the ones responsible. Okay, I just want to throw that out. Thank Appreciate you. your call. I, now I sound like a preacher, but I, hey, that's okay, I suppose. 17 after the hour of 2, 932-1180, 1-800-227-9568. My guest is Stephen Kinsella with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. We're talking about the voucher system. Stay with us. We're I'm Jack Chris. My guest, again, is Stephen Kinsella. He is associated with the Right to Learn Committee in Louisiana. We're discussing the voucher system. You're on the air. Yeah, I was listening to you, and I was, uh, all I feel like is that uh, it's a blatant racism, a David Duke plan for education out of Louisiana, and... Uh, We've come too far in this state to once again uh, bring racism up, and Mississippi needs to, all we need to do is get uh, united behind our educational system that's in this state now. Uh, p- private versus public needs to stop, and this voucher system uh, is a kind of a catch-all or just a new word to use for uh, separate but equal. And uh, it, 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 Mississippi's not going to do that. And he can. He can make sell it in Louisiana, which I doubt he will, but in Mississippi, they, we're not going to do that. We're so not going back. We're going to stick with government force. You got that right. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you admit it, that's fine with me. I, uh, I, I don't understand, though, again, this equation with racism. I don't see how choice, choice can be equated. It seems to me the opposite, Jack. Well, as we pointed out, I, I certainly think it is. Uh, I think all parents, regardless of color, religion, creed, want better education they want to shop it is important right. for their children to find the best Let, let's point out that the uh, the rich people can already afford to pri- go to private schools under this system the poor people and the blacks would be better off much better off this system will help them more than any other economic group they will be able to afford private education which is better than public education which they cannot do now they can't do it now now you mentioned something to me during a break about the gi bills that that was a a s- kind of a, a neo uh, uh, right well this has been going on for years this the the government has a sponsored a GI Bill uh, for soldiers returning from the war, and the government paid for college education and education for soldiers through a voucher plan. It worked very well. This is not a new thing. In fact, um, in Louisiana, some of the teachers can attend public or private colleges, and they use uh, they have their tuition reimbursed, and that's a type of voucher system. If it's good enough for soldiers and it's good enough for teachers, uh, it should be good enough for students. I think it's good enough for everyone, uh, in my opinion. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, Jack, is your guest from California or Louisiana? Louisiana. Oh, well, I thought he was from California. Usually um, when people have those type of ideas, they come from California. Uh, no, that's the surfers. No, I am from L.A., sir. Oh, well, okay. That, <laughs> L.A. Uh, that, 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 that's the connection. Okay. Well, I knew of some connection to L.A., uh, Louisiana, uh, L.A., California, whatever, but... You know, I, I don't understand uh, how anyone, uh, knowing the situation in Mississippi, could could support something like that. I don't really think it can get off the ground anywhere why? else. No, why? I'm curious, really. Well, I mean, g- it, given how dismal this state is in education. Well, if it's if it is that, I think well, it is. What, 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 why has why is it that way? If it's if it is, it's because education, public education. And Mississippi has been underfunded through the years that we've had the lowest teacher salaries. But, sir, let me, let me ask you something. I, I understand your, your question, but let me point this out to you. Let's say, uh, you, do you think the, the answer is, uh, the solution, rather, is as simple as giving a bad teacher more money? What if that teacher is really not doing a good job and we increase his or her pay? Is that going to make the teacher perform any better? No, I'm, I'm saying through teacher evaluation uh, mm-hmm. and, and through higher salaries, you can attract good quality teachers. Uh, that is the way you do it. Uh, it, it. To the extent that we do have poor schools in Mississippi, it's because we have not uh, given the financial incentive there to get good teachers and to keep good teachers. Uh, Mississippi is too poor of a state uh, to try to uh, fund two educational systems. And for anybody to think otherwise is, is just plain ridiculous. I'm curious, uh, just uh, on the subject, are you uh, in favor of the lottery as proposed by Governor Mavis? Yes, I am in favor of the lottery. Okay. okay. I, I am in favor of the lottery. Right. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with uh, with this. I'm just curious to see if you were. Just yes. curious. Let me let Mr. Kinsella answer your points. Caller, all the points you brought up, giving teachers an incentive to perform better, 
and uh, rating the teachers, all this. All this can be form performed by the free market a lot more efficiently and a lot better than the government can do. Why, why would you rather set up a more expensive bureaucratic organization to do all the things that the free market can do? Well, sir, in, in Mississippi and I believe uh, elsewhere, uh, if, if, uh, if people had the ability to, uh, for us to establish two uh, uh, school systems. Well, there's only one, sir. Not I two. know, but I'm saying if we had two under your proposal. No, there would only be one under mine. There's two now. Well, it, 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 sure, there, there, would, there would be, uh, it would be the, the death knell to public education in Mississippi under your idea. That's true, and it would be, it would be the, and, the rising and, star of private education. Uh, no, it wouldn't. The, the poor people in Mississippi, and, and that is the majority of our state, would go to hell in a handbasket under your system. I don't see why, sir. Well, it, it's a fact uh, that uh, uh, if we, we cannot have uh, public education uh, in Mississippi and have a viable, if you think we have a, a bad public education system right now uh, under a voucher system, it would be non-existent. Well, sir, I tell you what, hopefully, you know, we do disagree, but hopefully we can still debate this and have our, uh, what we say and think account for something. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I, I would think so, but, okay. but, but the idea that you have would be bad for Mississippi. I appreciate your call. Thank you. Thanks a lot. 932-1180, Let's take one more call. You're on the air. Yeah, Jack. Hey. Uh, two or three fallacies in your guest position. Okay. One is, I think he's telling the truth about racism. I, what, what this is about is elitism. And, and let, me, let me support my point. Uh, he says that everybody would have an equal shot. That's not true. Under a private system, all you have to do is supplement that voucher. And after a while, you have the poor in one place and the rich in another. Uh, there's, there's no doubt the private school system across, all across America, and it's done a lot for America, and I'm not in favor of shutting that down either. But what you do is to separate the elite from the poor because they are able to supplement the voucher. Okay, let me let him answer that. All right. Okay, okay sir. Um that's the way it is right now. The, the poor and the rich are separated vastly. Uh, under the voucher system, you might have some, some differences in education, but the point is that the poor people would be receiving a better education than, than they are now. And if I'm more concerned about the actual education people receive than their relative education compared to other people. I'd rather see everyone get a lot better education, even if the rich get much better education, than, than the poor keep receiving well, the poor education they're getting now. Wait a minute. I'm not talking about the ultra-rich. They, they go off to... Uh, to military school or wherever you they mean go upper to. middle class. But, but in my community, the rich and the poor and the middle go to school at the same place. I happen to believe that this is good for our country rather than a caste system uh, that, that has proven not to work in, in many parts of the world. That's a part of my, my position. Well, they might be equal. And I agree with you. I think you would let blacks go to school with you provided they were among the elite. But and, what do you mean elite? Educationally or financially? Well, they go together. Well, or maybe that says it, something, though. It, it, maybe that separate. says something. If you want to find good education, go where the income is high. Listen, well, I, I appreciate your call. Wait, wait a minute. I want to do one more. Real quick, real right quick. quick. All right, real quick. You're assuming that if you privatize it, that there won't be any bureaucracy. If you believe that, you need to take a look at IBM, General Motors, General Electric, and all the others. They make a profit, sir. The government doesn't. They, they make a profit. It's right. But you, you said that there wouldn't be any bureaucracy earlier. There'd be less discussion. bureaucracy. Less. And the third one, so, right quick. Sorry. Right. Well, look, I've got to move on, okay? Can you, I've got to move on, all right? Sorry to do this, too. We've got to go to the news. The music is playing. We're going to give an address when we come back and talk with Lou Rockwell, how you can get in touch with some people with the Right to Learn Committee. Stephen, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Jack. And thanks for coming over. I enjoyed it. We appreciate uh, your comments. Ho hopefully we can get something started here. In Mississippi, nine three two eleven eighty one eight hundred two two seven nine five six eight. Lou Rockwell is next. Stay with us. You know we've got to find you. And we are back. Good afternoon, two thirty three at News Talk eleven eighty WJNT. I'm Jack Chris, and for those of you who are interested in what is going on in Louisiana with the voucher system, you can get in touch with me, and I'll be glad to give you some phone numbers. I'm trying to establish uh, a working system between the two states to see what we can do to uh, try to propose uh, uh, the voucher system here as an alternative to the lottery system. 932-1180, And it's my pleasure to welcome back to the show my guest, Mr. Lou Rockwell, president and founder of the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Lou, good afternoon. Hi, Jack. Great to be with you. We're expecting s a little snow and sleet this afternoon. Is, uh, it, is it sunny and beautiful up in uh, California? Actually, it's, it's a little bit foggy. You'll be glad to know. Well, maybe everyone's got bad... 